you just went to this EC2 and you are able to launch it and what you have is you are getting your external IP and you are able to connect through external IP and do this thing. So how we can, I mean, when we have a new instance, it's getting some IP address. Do we have a control on all this? I mean, do we have a control on this uh, private IP address? So are the subnets that are three, uh, two subnets are there in London. So can we create our own subnets? So all these things we will uh, go through now and we'll understand how this will happen by default when, when you launch an instance. So how we are able to connect? What are the components by default AWS has given us uh, to start work directly? So let's see that. Is so we discussing about the subject or are we are discussing about something else? No, it's subject itself. Subnet itself. Uh, Okay, so if we come back here, the services, if you see, there is a one more service called a VPC, Virtual Private Cloud. Okay, so what exactly this is? Even though few, I mean, uh, uh, when we say it is a public cloud and many organizations or many users will come and create uh, servers here. So by default, whenever you create an account, you will have a one VPC created for you. So virtual private cloud. This is a logical boundary or logical regulations that you have for your account within the public cloud. Okay. So they will create one uh, VPC here, some subnets automatically created for you, and routing table, internet gateway. These are all things pre-configured for you. So you are able to log in and you are able to launch machines without doing any internet gateway configuration, routing, all these things. So why this is happening? So by default, I mean, if they don't want to, AWS don't want to, not don't want to, so they, they want to make it very easier, even though somebody doesn't know about the networking or internet gateway thing, they should be able to come here and launch server and able to start with it or work with it. So how we can understand, so when you are saying that you are an architect or system admin, so you should be able to know how we can create it and what will happen uh, or how many subnets that we need to create. Uh, these things we need to know it. So let's try to do this. I mean let's delete the default one and let's try to understand. I will use for all customizations in Ireland so I will be knowing that if I do any modifications I need to delete all these things in Ireland. That's the reason I will choose that. Ireland. Okay, I will select it. Mm. So I need to delete all this. So if we delete and the default VPC that is that came along with the initial account creation, you can't create it back. Okay, default one we can't get, but you can do the customization. So for the lab purpose, what it is, I select one region and deleted the uh, all default settings. So I want to make sure that uh, we will create our own subnet, and so we should able to know 
how this is happening, how they are creating this for us. Okay, this is how we need to do it. So let's see the NAT get this version alone term and therefore ellipse could not be close it. Even I have a NAT get this, oh my god. Uh, it will charge me. I forgot this also. Deleted. So while it is deleting, we will cover this theory of that. Okay. So I mean, let's imagine that we have on a data center. I um, mean, this or on premises or corporate data center. How it looks like? So it will have a, some network switches and some storage on it, and we have a firewall so we can have an ACLs access control list and we will have a, some few subnets are configured in that. So people will say that if you don't have a networking care, uh, understanding, just leave it. But, uh, but what we know is, I mean, yeah, we have a um, public subnet or private subnet. No, 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 don't keep database subnets in the public subnet. These are the terms that we hear. So why it is like that? To control the traffic between the uh, servers, I mean, between different categories of servers, uh, to manage easily the networking subnet so we will create a few subnets in our data center so we will dedicate one subnet for the uh, front-end servers and one subnet for the database servers and one subnet for the applications and remaining all we can keep um, and some other servers whatever it is that we want the multi-purpose or commonly used server mass mailing server this will put so it's, it's made it will made our life easy in management uh, or controlling the traffic between those so this is a DMG uh, we'll hear it so we'll have a controlled uh, traffic in that network <clears throat> so the same thing we can implement in AWS itself it's kind of you can build your own data center on AWS let's see how we can start it so in right hand side it will looks like that so but it's a, um, visually presented in different way so this is our VPs I mean this is AWS this entire AWS and this one is our VPC the black dotted line within the square so this is our VPC that means our logical boundary for your account. I created my own account, so you will have a one VPC created for one VPC created for you. It's a, I mean, it's a logical boundary for you. And again, this one we have an availability zone. Okay, so. Um, so we in this we no need to create right this AWS provide in each region few availability zones so if it is Ireland we'll have at least two availability zones one and two within that what are the subnets that you want to create how many subnets that you want to create that is all up to you so we will try to create this entire setup now let's see it's very easy but ideally you might not get a chance in a real time to create this VPC but you should be able to understand what is the VPCs that we have what are the subnets that we have within that which one are public subnet which one are the private subnet so th those things we should be able to understand it but let's see how we can do that's very simple <laughs> 
So here we have an empty VPC now. So we have a widget, but we don't follow the widget, so it doesn't uh, make you understand. Let's try to create a VPC here. Create a VPC. Yeah. So just name it. Uh, VPC hyphen um, 600. Oh. VPC. What happened? VPC. Yeah. So while creating the VPC, this is the where we need to put, we need to keep the entire IP range that you are going to use in your VPC. This you need to make sure you need to decide that range at this moment. So while deciding this, you need to careful or you need to think, you need to keep your on-premises data center in mind. Uh, I am using in on permit center uh, the series is 192.162. something da, 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 da. that kind of that network I'm using in data center so there is a possibility that we may connect this AWS VPC to in future we may connect this to this so at the time the IP conflict should not come so you have to keep in that mind do you have any IP ranges or collect all the IP ranges in your present organization and make sure that you give something not there in that some subnet which is not there in the present organization and choose that IP range in AWS so in future if you make any connection you shouldn't have any issues so if you're running that individually so you can give it whatever the IP range that you want but in future if you have a plan to make a connectivity like VPNs between these two yes you need to think that um, before giving that IP range so I will choose this some demo purpose this one 10.1.0.0 slash 16 10.1.0.0 slash 16 what this means to us by looking at the so in entire VPC this if anything is starting from 1.10 point something so yes this is in AWS that we can say okay, let's create it uh, one can we give any any subnet I um, it's like a any IP address like this is, is nothing but IP address yeah so can we Yes, you can give any IP, private IP address, class A, class B, class C, any of them. Do you have any basics of uh, IP, I mean, networking, I mean, how to create a subnet, this thing? No, 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 I don't have anything. Mm, okay, so ideally, yes, we can give any, uh, except the public IP range, yes, we can give the all private IP address. So, how do you give the public range and which is not a public range? So looking at like so, for example, if I'm looking at that IP address, mm -hmm. uh, whatever you given, so how do I know like whether it's a public IP address range or not? So uh, there is a specific range in class A, class B, and class C. So by looking at that itself, you could you could able to say that there is a specific range. Okay. Where do you be looking at that specific range? So this 10 dot series, I mean we have uh, some series on it in A class and B class and C class. What is A, a class and B class and C class? Uh, <laughs> it will take a lot of time man to explain that basic uh, networking. So uh, I mean, it's, it's based on the number of hosts that you get people, I mean the Internet Authority has divided this IP range. So if you are looking for a huge amount of IP address, then you'll go with class A and it's a minimum then B and C. Even D, E also is for uh, military purpose, they will use E and uh, for research purpose, they will use D, those kind of things all that. So it's huge basic understanding of networking, but we don't need to know that. But we don't okay. need to know that. So we just know that by this is the IP range that VPC is working on it. So whenever we launch any machine on this VPC, so you will get one of the IP from 10.1. something dot zero. So that's what we need to know. So to understand this, I mean, it's good if you know that, but 
now we know neat okay so uh, actually if you see here 10.1.0.0 slash 16 is it means only 16 IPs can access this 0 to 16 uh, no <laughs> it can access almost uh, thousands of uh, uh, IP address range. This chunk of IP address, it's not 16, this is a subnet. Uh, so with this, you can host almost uh, thousands of IP address. We can divide this into subnets. It's like a main flat uh, apartment, so in that you can create some small subnets like a flats. Let's imagine this is an apartment and you can create a subnets uh, subnets is nothing but flat in this so it's a big chunk of IP pool 16 is I mean out of 32 up to 16 characters uh, can be used as a network and remaining all nodes I mean I mean it's it will take few days man to understand this but we no need to go no need to go in depth of it okay I will uh, google it too yeah, I mean, if you really want, I can spare some time, but uh, you really not not really need it. Understand this? So you never get a chance to create this. Actually, we'll show you. I'll, I'll cover a few. I mean, a half an hour or something on it. Okay, later on. So let's try to understand this chunk of IP range that we give in while creating the VPC. Okay. Okay, in after it's been almost five years for me in AWS, but I never got a chance to create this VPC. It at the time of initial account creation with AWS consultants and with uh, network engineers within the organizations, uh, it will be created. Once it is done, I mean we just use it at this level. Okay, we no need to create later on. Okay. Okay, so. That's the one, then we need to create subnets out of it. Okay, so we need to create a subnet. So we have a big chunk of pool. We, we have an AWS and we created a VPC. And under that, what is this? We have availability zones and subnets. So how we can create subnets here? So in the subnets place, create a subnet and make it as S and 0, 1 and in which VPC it's asking so you need no, no, excuse me uh, yes that uh, IP address is the uh, availability zone or no I'm trying to you know the no I mean I'm, tr I'm trying to you know understand the diagram versus this IP the real time scenario uh-huh I'm sure. trying to uh, correlate with that diagram actually. Okay, so what's what's your question? Tell me. Okay, it's uh, here it is on the orange line, you know, the the lines is uh, showing the availability zone, right? Right. And what is the IP address in the? Just now we you discussed you explained about the IP address in the VPC section, right? Uh, yeah. Can you go to the browser. Yes. Uh, see, I mean, there is a 10.1.000 slash 16, right? Yeah. IP. That is the, is that uh, availability zone or what do you call that one? No, no, this is a chunk of IP address that we are going to use in that VPC. While creating this VPC, it will ask, what is IP range that you are going to create in this VPC? Oh, okay. okay. So what is the IP range? What is the block size? That's we given as 16, 10.1 that slash, I mean 00, 00 slash. Oh, okay. So in so this... That is, what I'm trying to, yeah, that is what I'm trying to correlate to with this diagram versus the IP address. Yeah, good, good. No, so that means an entire data center like in this, so we are going to use 10.1.0.7. The only this range where if we launch any instance only it will give the IP range from this okay that's what this means so when you launch it I mean now 
okay subnet one okay let's cancel it let's create it back so I'm just creating the subnet one now SN01 and so the, what is the other information that we had you can choose which availability zone that you want to create now so how many availability zone in London we have in Ireland we have a three availability zones so any one of the availability zone you can choose it or you can choose only single availability zone let's choose one of it okay then so it's a big chunk of IP range so you need to divide this into a sub blocks so how we can do that I mean don't worry about how we can do it I just give it okay zero dot one dot zero slash twenty four that you can do the small chunk of from the big chunk of IP range okay I created one subnet so let's try to create one more here so SN02 and same VPC and I created in 1B so 10 dot 1 dot 2 dot 0 slash 24 okay and so I created one more okay created one more so let's try to create one more so SN03 and come back and let's one see let's try to create instead of this range let's try to put something else like uh, 1 dot 10 dot 20 dot or something 1 dot 0 slash 0 slash 24 let's see what it says so this is not within the CADR ranges of VPC so you need to make sure that you have to check take a chunk off from the actual bulk uh, nodes that you have given here this is a big chunk of IP range so whenever you create a subnet within that VPC you need to choose a small chunk of IP range from this um, big CADR block that's what this means so that's the reason we need to make sure that one one dot is three dot three slash twenty four so I took a small chunks from the black block of IP range what is saying okay so we created three subnets so if you click on here you should be able to see a number of IP addresses that are available in this block and even any IP so any subnet you choose so you have it to a number of IP addresses available in that okay. so what we just did if you compare this with this you, you have an a VPC created and we have a few subnets created on each availability zone so this is a basic thing was ready so after creating the subnets are we able to launch a machine and connect ideally what we need I mean if you want to connect to any machine in a data center we should have an internet right so how we can create an internet gateway for AWS so this is how the image look like once we created this there should be two more components need to be there to make connectivity between these any instance that you launch here so one is internet gateway and there should be one routing policy should be there pause within this the communication will be very well but if you want to communicate to the external world by going to through this internet gateway you need to tell we need to enable a routing table and attach to any one of these subnets saying that if you are trying to go to internet like Google or Microsoft you need to go to the internet gateway then it will manage the outer connectivity that's what so 
So let's take an apartment as an example. So within the apartment, you no need to go to the external gate, right? So you can go to any other apartment with any another flat within the apartment. But if you want to go outside, so some other apartment, you have to go through that main gate. So because we are humans, we know that, right? If you want to go out, you need to go through, take a car and uh, through go out from the external uh, main gate. But how systems know? That is the routing policy that we need to enable. So we just create some routing policy for it and assign that to the subnet. So whenever they, any instance within that subnets want to go outside, then they will use the internet gateway. That one will make it, uh, the statement will make it in a routing table. So there are two more things that we, mean we need to make to make connectivity between this and external law. Let's see how we can do that. So we created a subnets, subnets and VPC and now we need to create an internet gateway. So where we can create in this place. So create an internet gateway, right? Internet gateway 400. Let's create. So very simple internet gateway create. So right click and attach to the VPC. So we have only one VPC here. So actually we can create multiple VPCs in the same region. Okay, that's the reason it's showing up which VPC we want to attach. We'll see that later. So once we have a VPC, so we are also created internet gateway. We created VPC and we created few subnets and we created internet gateway. So now we need to make a connectivity or we need to tell this uh, root table and assign to subnet. Then any machine that you launched here can communicate with external world. That means from our laptop we should be able to connect to that instance. Okay. So how we can do that root tables? If you come here by default, one root table will be created. So what it will do is, it will make sure the connectivity is okay between the subnets within the VPC. How many subnets that you create, they will communicate internally. For that purpose, it says entire subnet, any IP address within that is local. So by default, one root table will be created. But what we need to do is, we need to create one new root table that is uh, XTML ACC ESS. Let's put that name external access. Let's create it. We just created, we didn't do any uh, routing map here. So this created external access. So what is the root? What is the thing that we need to add here? Click edit, add another root for the add another root. So this is the default notation in networking 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 slash 0. We have destination and target. If they are trying to reach any IP range within this, these are local, you no need to go outside. That's what this means. If they are trying to reach other than this, this is the global network notation. If you are trying to reach other than 10.1. IP address, go to this one. In drop down, it's displaying our internet gateway that we created. Select it. So this is the notation. Other than this, if you are trying to reach, go to internet gateway, then it will manage. That's what we said it. Okay, we created a routing table. Now we have a rule. So this rule can be attached to subnets. Then only it will be applied to the instances. So let's subnet assess associations. Okay, click edit. These are the available subnets. In this place, you will have a which one you select. This will be listed here. So let's click edit. So out of these three, I will select a subnet one, this one. Okay, select it. Okay, good. This is the default setup will be configured whenever you log into, whenever you create an account. So what they will do is they will create a VPC in each region for you. 
they will create some subnets for you and they will create one internet gateway for you and they will create one route so you can able to connect to the external world so let's try to launch machine in subnet 1 now now we are in Ireland let's go to the EC2 launch instance and Ireland right yeah let's select this free volume Linux select it and free tide next okay now till now we didn't went to this place right so let's try to understand what this says until unless we understand the VPC and subnets this doesn't make sense that's the reason we haven't got so now in this place so number of instances that we want that's one and in network see here the VPC that we created on is displayed here if you have a multiple VPC that also will be displayed so no need to choose any other thing here by default it's only one so it so in subnets so here you can take a call because you know that uh, we created a three subnets and uh, you divided one subnet for databases let's imagine that that is the purpose we'll create subnets right so to manage the systems very well to control the traffic between them so uh, so what to which subnet we uh, enabled the internet gateway so subnet 1 SN01 this subnet we attach the routing table so let's try to create that instance okay let's try to create in that subnet okay remaining all leave it slowly we will uh, okay let's enable this auto assigning of public IP let's assign enable it and review and launch uh, nothing else launch so what is this island what we have keys Mm. class 100 class 5000 class 100 we have class 100 acknowledge launch server so what we did is we launched the instance in subnet 1 where we are we are saying that we are able to connect to that machine this is what the default setting that AWS has created so we just simulated to understand these are the components involved if you are trying to connect any machine by default okay so we have an IP address of it copy let's try to connect it Pretty. SSH uh -huh. Okay, so we are able to connect to the Linux machine. So let's see the difference of that. So let's try to launch a machine here or here. So let's try to launch in subnet 2. Okay, subnet 2 this time we are launching. Review and launch, launch, class 100 is fine, launch it. So what is the difference that we know in VPC management? What is the difference between subnet 1 and subnet 2 here? Guys, just guess. Have a guess. We did this small difference, right? In routing table, what we did, we assigned this routing table only one subnet. And I said that is the reason we are able to connect to any machines in subnet 1 if you launch any machine in subnet 2 since it doesn't have the routing table attached to external access we shouldn't be able to connect it okay let's try to say it so you need to make sure you understand this it will be useful while troubleshooting any issues any access issues in real time 
Okay, we have a second machine running. IP address didn't get it. Uh, we sel didn't select the IP address. Okay, let's give an elastic IP. Oh, we have a one free IP attached it, associate address. Okay, I want to simulate as is. So let's cancel and create new instance. Launch Amazon A2 subnet 2 is selected, enable auto SN IP address, review and launch, launch 100. Okay, we can actually give the next IP and we can try it, but I want to simulate as is, so I haven't done it. View the instances, I want to release this, otherwise I will get charged. Okay, instances, terminate one instance, it doesn't have an external IP. Terminate. Okay, so how we know which server is in subnet 1 and which server is subnet 2? Hmm? Yeah. Yes. So we are here. So how we know subnet is subnet 1 and subnet 2? In subnet 1, we can get this ID I mean, uh, and compare with, but the friendly name SN01 and SN02 not listed. But we know that private IP of it is, what is the private IPs that we are getting now? 10.1.1. something. What should be this one? 10.1.2.176. What are the IP address? I mean, from after this range, it will be changing for each instance. This will be common. What are the instance? If you launch in subnet 2, it will be same. So, 2 means subnet 2. How and why? Because when we created subnets, SN02, what is the range that we given? 10.1.2.0 slash 24. So, if you by looking at IP address, you should able to tell, oh, it's subnet 2 that we have. Or you can make it, it's a database uh, uh, subnets. In VPC communication, you can edit it. Uh, the, we can rename this as database. Okay, this is database subnet. If any IP we are getting slash 10.1.1, so that means all database servers in that subnet. Okay, like that we should be able to recognize. Even though if you're not getting any chance to create this VPC, but we should be able to understand all these concepts. Let's see. I mean, because we we installed one more instance on subnet 2 10.1.2.176 so let's try to connect to that what it will say copy this IP SSH class 100 So we're not able to connect here. It's not allowing me. So what if I what I need to do if I want to connect to this machine? We need to assign the router. What is that? Uh, we have to assign the uh, the router to the router. Yes. Yeah. I have to assign that. So. We are, you need to remember this routing table, routing table, subnet, VPC. So we need to assign the routing table to this subnet as well. Then we should be able to connect to this machine. Let's try and see. Where is this? Okay, add it. We have, uh, I have a question, quick question here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have mapped the uh, the specified range of IPs, IPs like in a subnet one, and we routed them. And also, uh, we added the internet gateway here. 
Yeah. So in this case, you are able to connect from internally and connected the machine from internally and also you are connected from externally. So all over the go, whatever the range and globally through the internet you are connecting the machine. There is no difference, right? No difference. I mean internally we didn't connect, right? Only with external IP we were able to connect. Okay, by using the public IP. Yes. Like, through, through internally means if you are connecting this machine, from here we can able to connect to the, the one that we created in subnet 2. By default, they will come. Uh, they will. They, they will talk connect. To yeah, they will talk each other. They no need to create a separate routing table for it. By default, any machine within the subnets can communicate with each other. Okay, so uh, all the time we just need to define it in the root root table. It not need to be mentioned. The gateway, internet gateway, is not needed to be for all the subnets. Yes, definitely in a real time what will happen is we no need to give the internet, I mean we no need to publish all the servers to external facing. Why? I mean yeah. ideally database servers we don't keep in a public subnet. So why we okay. need to publish? There is a risk, right? If you put it in public, people will scan it and the, there is a possibility of hacking. If they know the IP address of your database servers, they might use some tweaks and if you have port open then they can tweak it. So ideally these are best practices for um, keeping these databases out of uh, public network. Only front end servers keep in public network and make sure you control the traffic between these two by using ACLs. So that is the reason we will segregate the entire subnet into small chunks of subnets and then we will control the traffic between them. That's the reason. So let's try to enable this subnet 2, this routing table and associate subnet 2, this routing table. We are in sub routing table and I click edit. So I just saving it. So even... Yeah, let's finish this now. Let's, let's finish this. Let's try to connect it. Okay, let's try to restart this session. Okay, so EC2 hyphen US E0. So by just enabling that routing table to that uh, subnet 2 as well, we are able to connect to this machine. Okay, what this means to us is the subnet where we have a proper routing table or routing table with internet gateway, that subnet is called public subnet. And uh, and if any any subnet that doesn't have the internet connectivity, I mean internet gateway uh, connectivity, then those subnets called private subnet. So how many subnets we have here? Total we have a three subnets. So now how many of them are public subnets? How many of them are public subnets now? Two of them. Two of them. Two of them. Two of them. Yes, database subnet and the subnet 2. Why not subnet 3? Because we haven't associated the uh, routing table to connect it. So this subnet, because you need to remember this terminology. That's the reason it will be asked in the ARCLET questions. Okay, these two are the public subnets and this one is a private subnet. So let's go on with your question now. What's your question? Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, according to this uh, diagram, actually, we have the each and every subnet uh, has to have the internet gateway, right? Uh, each subnet has to have internet gateway. No, we'll have a one internet gateway, and we'll we'll yeah. uh, we will have a route. If you want to allow, if you want to connect any machines on it, so we will allow it. We'll create a routing table for it and associate that subnet. Yeah, that that I understood. And uh, but in the in you know, when we talk about the on-premise, in on-premise actually the database servers, uh, you know, the internet should not be there. You know, that is the that, that is the thing we are uh, considering. But here in AWS actually the internet should be there, right? I'm trying to understand the database, uh, the subnets, you know, the database servers basically. Okay, so how we can communicate. Uh, Okay, so if you compare this, so let's imagine that you put, we have a three subnets, right, in our scenario. 
So put all database servers in subnet 3, then, don't, they, then they don't have internet connectivity, right? But they can communicate the web servers which are there in subnet 1 and subnet 2, right? So I, yeah, by default, it, the communication between subnet 1 and subnet 2 will happen by default. So we don't need to do anything. But to communicate external world, yes, we need to create an internet gateway. Okay. So, so which means every instance supposed to have a uh, route to the internet gateway? Not every instance. We configure the routing table at subnet level. So once we configure it in subnet level, what will it must launch one, one instance in public subnet. So we already configured. If you launch any instance on subnet 2 on database subnet, we will get internet, right? I mean, we are able to connect to that machines. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it or not? Yeah, this, the, yeah, this thing, we, uh, I got it, but... Um, the part I did not get it is, um, you know, for the database or without internet, actually, we are, how we can connect to that. Uh, ah, okay. No, got it. So, ideally, what we will do, so, if you have an only database servers, I mean, mm -hmm. if you have only AWS, then you have a challenge. So, what people will do is, we'll put one server here. It's called okay. as a, I mean, a jump host that we call, right? We'll put one jump host here from external world. People will connect here from here to connect to the any server within that uh, within that network. I mean, within any subnet, we can connect to machine, right? Once you connect to this machine, which is there in a public subnet, from here you can able to connect to any machine in the network. That is the one way. Or so ideally what people will ask as an organization, so I'm, if I'm saying that I'm opting for AWS, you might have already data center within your organization, right? So what people will do is they will have a connectivity between AWS and data center. So when you are in office, you no need to think about the external IPs now. We can create a VPN between your data center or your organization to AWS. So you can directly connect using the LAN IPs from your laptops. Okay. You got it? So we will have VPN connections. Yes, I mean, actually that is what uh, I'm doing it, but behind the scenes I don't know how they did it. Uh, we, have a, we have a session on it. We have a session on it. Uh, but we don't to do the real time but I will I will uh, I will make sure we understand this is the same thing I mean ideally in any official course no one will tell us about this uh, VPC how this will happen but uh, I got this uh, from some websites so I thought until unless you know this we don't know I mean you don't get an official chance to create it but what you will do is once you join in any organization once you have an access to AWS you just open this VPC. Okay, we have an, a VPC, right? We have an, a VPC. And what is the subnet? Okay, 10.1.0 slash 16, right? So that means you, you know, you don't know, right? That uh, you are connecting to AWS server. So what you now you can understand is if somebody gives an IP, by looking at IP, you can say, ah, this is hosted in AWS, man. If, but if something 10.1. something, Okay, right, I know this is hosted in AWS, right, I got it. So you can go to the subnets, uh, okay, in AWS we have a three subnets, right. What is the range, 1.10.3, right, we have this range, um, okay, this range, uh, okay, right. We have a three subnets in AWS in Ireland region, very good, that I know. Okay, what is the routing table? Okay, so we have one external access. That means only two subnets uh, are able to communicate external world. One subnet left it. I think it might be the database servers. Okay, by looking at this, you should be able to understand these info. Until unless you know this concept, so you can't decide. I mean, you'll have a better understanding of it if you know this. Okay. 
this is what we do if for me I never got a chance to create an VPC in real time I never got and I mean in life so the, of course this is live but uh, for any opco I didn't create it but they will they, they will deal with only architect professional architect at the time at the initial setup all AWS people architects and the TAMs will come and sit with you with your networking team and they just sort it for you but we should be able to understand why did they create it but yeah. if you have an access do you have an access to your organization uh, AWS console any read-only kind of thing no no okay if you have a if you can ask a, a read-only access so you should be able to go this network connections and see in this place you will have an, a VPN connectivity for your organization and your VPC that uh, endpoint gateway you can see here they should be having a VPN connection uh, or direct connect so that's the reason you're able to connect from your office okay so 83 okay so any questions on this guys you had to do one or twice this lab select only one region and delete all of it and create this VPC and select I mean you can follow whatever I shown in the video then you could able to understand just uh, try to do twice okay because it's eight so if I start this another thing it will take time that is uh, uh, we need to enable the NAT gateway for this okay so the other part is so if you don't have any questions we'll move on so other part is okay let's imagine that in subnet 3 if you launch any machines we can't connect to the external I mean we are unable to connect to those machines but even though if you don't have any connectivity directly but the systems which are there in that subnet need an internet access why to get the patches or something so that subnet also need some internet access so how we can enable that instead of this is two-way communication if you make it internet gateway like this this will be from here we can from internet we can able to connect to these machines this machine able to communicate back these machines also will have internet access but what will happen to uh, the private subnet so if you have something like this and when we don't have an uh, uh, internet gateway attach or we don't have an, a routing table attached to this then how these machines in this subnet in our example subnet 3 how the instances in subnet 3 can communicate to the external world or download the OS patches how they can do that that is uh, AWS has provision one provision like um, NAT gateway so uh, we can install the NAT gateway in public subnet and we can route the traffic from here to this then they can get the Windows patches or Linux patches by communicating the external world so this lab we will do tomorrow let's say it fails so I need to go and so just do the labs otherwise you lose the grip okay so any questions on today's class No, no questions. Al <laughs> uh, good or still have any doubts? <laughs> you can ask me. Yeah, we can. Have, we have some doubts, but I think no, at least to me, I have some doubts. But no, once I go through the video again, probably. Yeah. I'll get some. Yeah, just do the lab today itself, and uh, maybe you can ask me the question tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much and have a nice day.